Something is wrong with me. For as long as I can remember, I've always felt empty, incomplete, like a part of me is missing. This hollow feeling has dominated my life. I've never been able to feel anything else. My world has always been cold, dark, silent. My mother was exactly like me when she was a child. But when she met my father, everything changed for her. He brought warmth and color and life into her world. He made her complete. She told me that one day I'd meet someone special, just like she did. Someone who would cure me, fix me, save me. I've spent my entire life waiting for that day, dreaming of the moment when I'd meet the person who would complete me. It was the only thing for me to look forward to. It was my only reason to live. And then, one day, I found him. When I met him, something changed inside of me. My world was filled with color and light. It was like I had opened my eyes for the first time. I felt warm. I felt complete. I felt alive. He is my escape from the cold, gray, empty world I've been trapped in. He is the one I've been waiting for. The person I want to spend the rest of my life with. But... Someone is trying to take him from me. She wants him, but not in the same way that I want him. She could never appreciate him the way I do. She doesn't deserve him. He belongs to me. I have to stop her, even if it means hurting her even if it means killing her. There is nothing I won't do for him. I won't let anyone come between us. I don't care what I have to do. I don't care who I have to hurt. I don't care whose blood I have to spill. I won't let anyone take him from me. Nothing else matters. No one else matters. He will be mine. He doesn't have a choice. Hey, Yanchan. <laughs> We're trying to rehearse for a play, but the lead actress isn't here. Would you mind filling in for her? <sighs> Come on, it'll be fun. It's a play about a serial killer. <laughs> okay, I'll help. Yay! Come with me, Yanchan. Thank you.
The killer picked up the knife that was on the table. Then she went on a killing spree, murdering everyone around her. With each kill, she lost more and more of her sanity, and her attacks became more brutal and savage. When the deed was done, she burst into maniacal laughter. <laughs> now that she had calmed down, she was able to proceed to the next phase of her plan. The killer quickly began to destroy the evidence of her crime. She picked up one of the corpses. She carried the corpse to a nearby incinerator. And she dumped the corpse inside. Once all five corpses were in the incinerator, she activated it. Corpse is incinerated. She prepared to clean up the rest of the evidence. <laughs> the killer started to clean up all of the blood that she had spilled. First, she grabbed a bucket. She brought it to a sink and filled it with water. Then, she added bleach to the water and dipped a mop into the bucket. After that, she mopped up every last drop of blood on the ground. With all of the blood mopped up, she moved on to the next part of the cleanup process. killer quickly ran to the shower building to clean herself up. She opened up her locker. She removed her blood-splattered outfit and changed into a towel. Then, she took a shower and washed the blood from her body. Once she was clean, she returned to the locker and changed into clean clothing. Perfectly clean. Now, nobody would suspect that she just committed murder a few <laughs> minutes ago. The killer carried the murder weapon to a drinking fountain and used water to wash the blood away. Then, she picked up the clothes that she had worn during her killing spree. She brought the blood-stained clothing to a washing machine, tossed it inside, and activated it. 
wiping away the last piece of evidence that connected her to the crime. Mm, just thought of something. Instead of cleaning the evidence, she could have just dumped it into the incinerator along with the corpses, you know? Well, I guess it works either way. The killer needed to steal a key, but a witness was nearby, so she hid behind a nearby wall. Once she was hidden from view, she performed a creepy giggle. The witness, confused and unsettled by this unexpected sound, began to investigate the noise. While the witness was distracted, the killer quickly grabbed the unguarded key. With the key in hand, the killer was able to proceed to the next phase of her master plan. The killer wanted to dispose of a corpse, but witnesses were nearby, so she put on a raincoat put a tarp underneath the corpse of her latest victim, grabbed a circular saw and chopped her victim's corpse into pieces. She removed the raincoat, dumped the dismembered body part The killer wanted to dispose of a corpse, but witnesses were nearby. So she put on a raincoat, grabbed a circular saw, and chopped her victim's corpse into pieces. She removed the raincoat, dumped the dismembered body parts into the incinerator, and activated it. of a corpse in front of a group of witnesses without raising any suspicion. Excellent. <laughs> the killer made a mistake. She allowed a witness to see her while she was covered in blood. The killer's reputation was at stake. She spoke to the witness and quickly made up an excuse. witness fell for it. Next, the killer casually socialized with the witness to maintain her act. The witness was a member of the drama club, so the killer made a positive comment about drama. The killer was now on good terms with the witness. Her reputation was safe. For now. <laughs> The killer researched her victims thoroughly before killing them. She took out her smartphone, snapped a photo of her victim's face, saved it for future use, and hid behind a wall before her victim could take notice of her. By studying her victim's routine, she could visualize her victim's whereabouts at any point in time. 
She could even visualize the presence of nearby objects that would be useful for committing murder. The killer grabbed a syringe and a tranquilizer. She hid the syringe in her clothing. She spoke to her next victim and convinced the unsuspecting girl to follow her into a secluded room. She closed the door behind her, took out the syringe, and stabbed the girl from behind. She dragged the girl's unconscious body to a large case and dumped her inside of it. She left the area and returned after midnight to collect the body of her victim with no witnesses. The killer decided to drown her next victim. First, she grabbed some rat poison. Next, she used a giggle to lure her victim away from her food. Then, while her victim was distracted, she put the rat poison into her meal. The killer waited until the victim was puking into a toilet, snuck up behind her, and drowned her. What are you? If she could manage to find some lethal poison, I guess she could put that in the food instead. The killer planned to murder her next victim with electricity. The first step was grabbing a bucket. She filled the bucket up with water and dumped the water on the ground at her victim's feet. Then she picked up a car battery and threw it into the puddle of water. Even as she stood over the corpse of her latest victim, she was already planning her next murder. As the killer continued to take lives, she encountered different types of victims. But some of them fought back. Some victims would fight tooth and nail against the killer, attempting to disarm and apprehend her. However, she always stood victorious in the end. She prepared to build a tripwire trap. She grabbed a knife, a spool of thread, and masking tape. Her next victim would die by fire. She grabbed a canister of gasoline and poured it into a bucket. She poured the gasoline into a water cooler and set up the trap. After her unsuspecting victim was covered in gasoline, she used a candle to light her on fire. She had 
killed with blades, water, electricity, and even fire itself. She controls the elements. Today, she would eliminate her target and dispose of all evidence without being spotted even once.
Mission accomplished. There was nothing she could not do. She had become a true master of death. Thanks for your help, Yanchan. Hey. Do I know you? I saw you stalking an upperclassman today. I'm sorry, there must be some misunderstanding. There's no need to play dumb with me. I'm trying to help you. Once I'm in- I'm listening. Her name is Osana Najimi. She has a crush on him. She's planning to confess to him next Friday underneath the cherry tree behind the school. There's a myth that if you confess your love to someone underneath that tree, the person you confess to can't refuse. Why are you telling me this? I would be happy if something bad happened to Osana-chan. I think you might be the right person to give her what she deserves. Who are you? Have you ever heard of Info-chan? An urban legend about a girl who hacks people and sells their dirty secrets to the highest bidder. That's just the tip of the iceberg. I sell a lot more- Are you trying to tell me that you're Info-chan? Do you really expect me to believe that? I've installed an app on your phone. Take a look. How did you do that? That's not something you need to be concerned with. If you do a few small favors for me, I can offer a wide variety of services that should help you eliminate Osana-chan. Everything you need to know is in that app. And what if I don't want anything to do with you? If you're not interested in my services, I won't take it personally. Feel free to ignore me. But don't ignore Osana-chan. You have one week until she confesses to your precious senpai. Make her suffer.